we're back here on the Duncan Duo Show talking about the local real estate market. And we talked before the break about, you know, buying investment property compared to the stock market, how to get a loan on an investment property, some of the things to pay attention to, make sure you have reserves and, and what to avoid, what to protect yourself so you don't get burnt like people that were investing in the 2000s. I want to talk to Sean uh, before, you know, before we roll to the next segment, I want to talk to Sean, but I want to make one point really quick. If you want to get some of the information on some of the hottest real estate markets, definitely send us a message. Go to our website and send us a message through it, and I'll send you my list of information on where I think the best buy markets are. And I'll tell you, I think West Hampton is a big, great market south of Gandy. I think the lines of demarcation that control north of Kennedy, south of Gandy, I think they're going to erase over time. With what Jeff Minnick's doing downtown, with all the development that's going on over West Shore, I think South Tampa in 10 years is not going to be what we think of South Tampa today. I right. think it's going to extend even further through that little kind of peninsula area. And, you know, even, even you know, when you head over to the Courtney Campbell Causeway and, and you point. know, that, you know that, that, that area, Rocky Point, I think that's all going to kind of blend into one, you know, I wouldn't say one market, but, but it's all going to get hotter because, you know, they're, they're improving the interstates, they're improving the roadways. Um, the, the commercial development, there's more restaurants Your coming in. Expansion. Yeah, so, so there's so much of that that I think it's just going to continue to do really well. Same thing as you, you know, roll into some of the outlying areas. You know, Wesley Chapel, there's parks that are going to do well. There's some new neighborhoods coming in, East Hillsboro. But I think, you know, South Tampa's always had a target on it for, for real estate appreciation, and I think that's going to continue. So, Sean, what is it, you know, somebody that's going to invest in real estate, um, you know, some, they own their home. They've never invested in real estate. What are some simple legal steps that you can recommend to them to take advantage of, uh, without getting too complicated? Obviously, because right. I know every person's a little different. Every person's situation is a little different. But what are some things you could tell an investor out there to to make sure to do before they start investing in real estate? Everyone loves hearing the lawyer talk in legalese too. Right? right? And so. Yeah, they're not going to jurisprudence. Stay away, Mousey. Turn your we're turn your sure. volume up. What did he say? You're too far. Yeah. No, I mean, some simple. I, it, it really comes down to, like I think we were all discussing, your due diligence. Make sure that that you're working with an experienced agent, an experienced property manager. Build your team, an attorney, an inspector. Know what you're getting into ahead of time. What's the financial viability of the condo association, the homeowners association? Is it going to be a situation where you buy into the condo association and then you get hit with a rule that? We only allow X percent investor-owned, and, and you're above that, so you can't rent out your, your sure. unit anymore. That's a big one. Or uh, assessments have to go up because we're underfunded. I, those types of issues. Make sure you have a lease in place. Uh, there are a, a ton of form leases out there. I don't know that I would necessarily suggest that those are the best. Most forms of the to form use. leases are, are, you know, even the very generic. association of realtors one. Right. They're not good. They're not. They're, they need to be. It needs to be customized to that property and situation. And, and I, for, for my office, I can customize those things to what the investor needs, and it's fairly inexpensive to do that. And then that's a lease that they have. Can use forever. Forever. And and I'll tell you the other thing I think what you were talking about with due diligence, and this is kind of the part that I think is, is also, you know, just as important. So you're building out your team. You know, I read, you know, one of the very first books on investment I read was uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad with Robert Kiyosaki. And and his his whole concept was look, if you're going to be a real estate investor, you're going to have to trust other experts. You're not going to be able right. to know it all, especially as you're starting. So you need to find some people that have a good reputation that you can trust that can kind of help you start building that, you know, that, that right. model for yourself. So I think that's a good concept to follow is, you know, you got to have a team. you got to have a lawyer. you got to have a property manager. you got to have an agent that you work with. you got to have a, a kind of a defined vision of where you want to buy. It's right. like any other business. It's like any other It's a business. business yeah, it's a venture. Business. Yeah. It is a business. Just because I mean, it's yeah. not a nine to five job doesn't mean it's not a viable. What do you think so so sometimes people say, Oh, do I need to get an LLC? Do I need to do I need to have an extra liability policy? I mean every situation is different. So I know you can't blanket tell people whether they should or shouldn't get an LLC. But but you know what are maybe some tips on you know setting their real estate business up right. Yeah, a lot of it is also going to be tax driven. So get your CPA involved yeah, in it too. And if you're a U.S. citizen or not. Correct. Because exactly. that's, that's huge because yeah. foreign citizens have way All different, different um, IRS rules and regulations yeah. that Especially we have to the, follow. On the property. sale of it too, then right. now you're dealing with FERP. To the and it depends on your liability too, your right. liability protection. Yeah. I mean, do you have a lot of assets or do you not have a lot of assets? Right. And, and that, that's certainly a decision to make right. as to whether or not you go through the path of incurring all those extra right. costs. Yeah. And, but I would think from a basic perspective, 
either create an LLC or maybe look at putting the property in a land trust. There you go. That'll insulate the owner from liability. The other thing that it'll do is give the owner some anonymity. So if the owner is the one actually dealing with the tenants, the owner can say, well, listen, I'm representing the trust. I'm representing That's a good point. Yeah, that's yeah. something that we that, that, that we enjoy, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. with our stuff. Oh, let's right. talk to our client. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Right. It, it we have to fully disclose everything in the documents, but at the same time, you know, you still have that as an option. Too. Right. Now, using the LLC, using the land trust won't insulate you from liability to the bank. If you sure. go to Arnie and take out a mortgage to buy the property, you're still going to be the hook. Even you're if still you on the hook for the put it in an LLC, you're still on the hook So, the So, ta let's... You, Transition to you know somebody that wants to do a lot of investment property, and this is something. This is a good question for Arnie. What are I, I know at one point there was a limit on how many mortgages you could have at one, at one point. I knew because I was one of those people that was push, <laughs> pushing that limit. But but um, you know what what are the limits now, and how many rental properties someone can have? Are there limits? And and you know obviously there's if you go non-conforming you can find loans for for people. But what right. about you know. Right. So, um, it, it, again, it depends on um, whether you go with a Fannie Mae loan or a Jumbo loan or whatever the case may be. But, first of all, if, you, if you're buying a home as your primary residence, it doesn't matter how many rental units you have. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. terrific. Yeah, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, so if you're, if you're buying as your primary residence... So if you've got five rentals and you're buying a primary residence, you're, 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 there's no restriction on that as long as you look good on the numbers, as long as your... Right. Income yeah. ratio. Yeah. As long as, long as your debt Six. ratios are, are okay. So primary residence, no so much. Next thing is, does, does the house have a loan on it? So you can have, you know, a thousand rental properties and they don't have a loan. That doesn't count. Right. It's only okay. the ones with loans. Only the ones with loans. And so, the, and so depending on the... Depending on the investor, we, we call other lenders, we sell our loans to lenders that we call investors. Yeah. Um, it's anywhere from four to ten. Okay. Yeah. Depending, depending. on who it is. Yeah. 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 And I'll tell you, I think the, uh, the, the there was a oh, there was a period where it was like five, and five was like the hard number. If you had more than five, forget it, you're going to have problems. Well, and that was a few that, years ago. Right. Fannie right. Mae says, you, Fannie Mae will let you go to ten, okay, but if you get past five, they're going to look twenty five percent down. Yeah, you got to yeah, yeah. look at some more specific. <laughs> right, yeah. And I'll tell you what's interesting about that is is again, I mean, there's there's a lot of there's, there's people out there that are leveraged people, and there's people out there that would rather have no have not have the debt. Right. Um, I'm more of the not have the debt now versus what I was maybe five or six years ago. Right. So you know, but but interestingly, the the rates on investment loans aren't as bad as they used to be either. Right. There used to be like a one or two point. Difference. Yeah, it's uh, only about half a percent. Yeah, yeah, half a percent, which is really right. not much at all if you're thinking about it. So there's there's some opportunities out there to buy rental property that that people again they're you know they're investing in in the stock market and it's volatility. You know, there's a peace of mind element to it too. I think of owning real estate. I don't ever wake up and worry about what's going on. You know, I don't see on the news every right. day. Exactly. Real estate values drop nine percent today. There's a there's a peace of mind element to own investment real estate when you compare it to the stock market, where the news just just if you got a bunch of money in the stock market, man, it's like a roller coaster. You you. I mean, you're like crying one day, right. then you're happy, then you want to shoot somebody. It's like literally, it's like a roller coaster of emotions, and because it's all over the news, real right. estate isn't the same way. It's right. much more stable, it, and and I think from a peace of mind perspective. Um, you know, you don't have that emotional roller coaster. Now, granted, if you manage it yourself, sometimes you got to deal with some hassles, but you're not going to lose, you know, unless we get right. hit with a hurricane, that's a whole other story. Right. You're not going to lose 8% of your value in a day. You right. know? It's, it's different investing when you're going to rent it and hold it for the long term versus the guys out there that, that want to the flippers. Spec, the flippers yeah, right. Right. yeah, and I think that's a, it, it's funny because there's even a great opportunity in the flipper market right now. Absolutely. Still. There's, there's, there's a great opportunity investors. The difference is, is that that flipping homes is not for novices. Right. It is not for the inexperienced. It is not for the faint of heart. It is not for the guy that, if you own your own home, and now and you've owned one home in your life, and now all of a sudden you're going to become a flipper, unless you've had a lot of education and, and right. have worked with people that, that are truly helping you, it is it is probably a really risky yeah. Pro yeah. proposal. And one, and one piece of advice, do never tell your lender that you're buying this home to flip. They don't want to use flip. They don't want. They don't mess with you. They're not yeah, going to right. make yeah. money, right. you know, because <laughs> you're going to prepay. You're going to pay it off before they can make exactly. it. Right. You know, so it's it's funny because you know, but there's a lot of people that that pitch. Oh, you can flip, make money fast, and wholesaling homes and doing this and that. Yeah, is it possible? Yes. Is it realistic for everybody? No. no. Because it it is a lot harder 
than, than I think people realize, especially when you get into figuring out construction costs and finding things right. that were wrong that you didn't, right. you got to have a, pa a big enough pad and, right. and cost of sale, and then you got to sell it, you know, you got to buy it and have costs, cost you got to sell it and have costs. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more complicated. And again, I'm not saying there aren't great flippers, because there are, but they have a system. They have right. a team. You have They're to have professionals. a team. That's exactly right. They, they do it. They know the market. The average guy off the street, if all of a sudden he wakes up one morning with no education experience, but he saw Carlton Sheets talk about it at 2 in the morning, I'm going to flip homes for a living now. Yeah. They're probably going to get themselves in a lot of trouble. Right. So I, I always call, I always recommend people, you know, if you're a new real estate investor, start off with some simple rentals first. Buy something that can make a decent little cash return. Go through the process a few times of buying and selling, you know, property where you don't have a huge risk, so you're getting familiar with the process. And, and really know the market. I mean, be in the market, really know the market well, like really, really well, where you can look at a price in a neighborhood and know if it's underpriced or overpriced before you dream about flipping because you won't be able to recognize the great opportunities when they hit you anyway. And that goes for real estate agents as well. I agree. There's you know, a lot they, of They go out there and say, oh, you can rent it for this much, and they're, they're completely off base. Because they don't know the rental market. They don't know the rental market, yeah. and they don't know what the underlying issues are with that property. Or, or even uh, real estate agents that haven't ever flipped a home, but are, or haven't ever listed a home. Right. You know, there's a lot of agents that are. I got a lot of buyer agents. I mean, if I hear a buyer agent telling a client what they can resell a home for, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna want to strangle them. He's gonna have to come get me out of jail exactly. because I'm gonna <laughs> I don't kill them. Do criminal law. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But so, so in reality, though, there's a lot of agents that aren't experienced at that, that that's not what they do. That's totally. not their forte. They need to let somebody that's an expert, you know, kind of do that side. But when it comes to a resale price, exactly you right. know, they've never listed a home in the neighborhood, and now they're telling somebody before even looking at comps what it's worth. That's just not the right way to go. They've got to refer that to somebody that really knows what they're doing.